Recently, I stepped into the paradise of Arch Linux. I've always been a Debian or Ubuntu-based distro user, and the market of Linux is currently flooded with such options. But then, I switched to Endeavor OS, which is based on Arch. One of the best things about using Arch is the AUR, or the Arch User Repository. On distros which are not based on Arch, you need to go through a ton of instructions and manuals on the GitHub page to install a software from the source. On Arch, it is easy, you need to use the AUR helper. You just need the package name from the AUR and install it with the helper, that is yay. So I divided this video into four parts, I will be talking about major caveats and disadvantages of AUR also in this video. Now let us begin with what is AUR? Well, AUR is a community-driven repository for Arch-based users. It contains package descriptions, which are named as package builds, that allow you to combine a package from source with make package and then install it via Pacman. The AUR was created to organize and share new packages from the community and to help accelerate popular packages inclusion into the community repository. A good number of new packages that enter the official repositories start in the AUR. In the AUR, users are able to contribute their own package builds, that is PKG build and related files. The AUR community has the ability to vote for packages in the AUR. If a package becomes popular enough, provided it has a compatible license and good packaging technique, it may, may be entered into the community repository and directly become accessible by Pacman. Well, did I mention community repository earlier? Well, community repository contains packages that have been adopted by trusted users from the Arch user repository or the AUR. Some of these packages may eventually make the transition to the core or extra repositories as the developers consider them crucial to the distribution. I guess you will find it relatable. If you're using an Arch-based system, then they appear every time you update or install a new package in the terminal. For the next part, let me show you how to get AUR and how to install packages using AUR. It is really easy. I'll just switch to the terminal. You can skip this part if you know, or you can, uh, by clicking the next chapter, or if you want, you can even watch this part of the video. So let's continue. So I'm here on my Arch machine, uh, on my Arch desktop and uh, by the way if you want to get to this look uh, for your desktop, that is the one that I have done with the awesome window manager, you can check out the link that is up there in the right side. So you can go and check out from there. So let's open the terminal, right click and open terminal. So from here um, to install and AUR helper, you just need to use a package manager. For example, in Arch, we basically use Pacman, right? So you can just go for sudo pacman sy yay, and then you enter the password. Okay, I forgot to connect the internet. Well, you need to have a working internet connection, obviously, because the packages will be downloaded and then it is going to be installed. So let me just quickly connect to the internet. Just a minute and done. Now it should be working. So if I run this command again, and as you can see, I was talking about I, I was talking about these things, right? The core extra and community so that is what you can do now I have a system update pending that I will do later but after you hit Y the installation installation will continue and everything will be done properly so you don't need to take care of anything after that Arch will do it for you now after the installation is done you can use the yay command and you need not use it with sudo you just need to use yay whenever it's required it will ask for you know the administrative privileges other than that it will not ask for anything so let us just clear this and let's try and uh, install a package so um, let's go for ye uh, 
uh, for example awesome git I showed you earlier I've already installed awesome git from here so you can just install it just uh, then you you can go for the default options just by pressing enter and the installation will be done you need not do anything if you open the awesome uh, git github page if you try to install it from there you will find that there are a lot of things that are, that you need to follow uh, so it is a bit difficult for new users to install stuff but uh, if you get to install arch or any uh, system that is based on arch everything will, will become much easier for example if you want to go and install pycom jonaberg press the enter button and then you can go on with the installation that's it oh see so i'm not uh, i i didn't install anything because i have these packages installed so if you want, you can just go there and install. Similarly for pfetch, for example, I just had to go for EA and install pfetch just like this. So if you enter pfetch, it will show you this. So I have added it to uh, added the code to the dot bash rc file. Uh, if I'm not making uh, any mistake with that, so let me just check it out. I often keep forgetting things. Yes, dot bash rc file from the home directory. I've just edited that to add uh, pfetch and every time I open the terminal, this command gets executed and it shows uh, that thing. Well, talking about the advantages of AUR, you can compare it to PPAs. Now, there are some advantages of AUR over PPAs. You do not need to add PPA for every package. Now you can take it over from the original maintainer if it is gone off the grid and you can actually see how the package is built and you can also be sure by seeing if there is anything malicious added to the original source. Now AUR is very close to ports from BSD land where PPAs are a special software repository for uploading software packages to be built and published as apt repository by Launchpad. Now it is a completely different approach. AUR is essentially just a community repository of package builds. You can create your own PKG builds easily and you can check and tweak the ones you get from AUR. It's much more transparent than what happens between the upstream source and the binary you end up with. There is no commercial entity providing the infrastructure handling or taking over packages in AUR is super low barrier. You just need to build the software yourself. Automated updates are possible only with third party software. Using the AUR is like crossing the street. If you proceed with caution, you should be fine. If you're new to Linux, it is advised to not to use AUR until you find a foundation knowledge about Arch or Manjaro and Linux in general. It is true that anyone can upload packages to the AUR, but the trusted users are in charge and they keep an eye on what gets uploaded. Although the trusted users perform quality controls to the uploaded packages, there is no guarantee that the packages in AUR are well formed or not malicious. In practice, AUR seems to be a quite safe, but in theory, it can do some damage. But only if you are not careful. A smart Arch user always inspects package builds and dot install files while uh, building a package from AUR. Additionally, trusted users also remove packages in AUR that are included in core or extra or community. So there should be no naming conflicts in between them. The AUR will often contain developmental versions of the packages. For example, in the previous video, I installed awesome git using AUR in the same manner. As for the AUR packages, Pacman handles dependency resolution and detects file conflicts. So you never have to worry about overwriting files in one package with files from the other package, unless you use the force option by default. If you do that, you probably have some more serious problem than just file conflicts.